So today is Monday, October 1st, 2014. This is the tutorial on how to do a tree map with a legend and a key, part, part, in part based on Chapter 5, Visualizing Proportions, uh, from um, the book uh, Visualizing, Visualize This by Nathan Yao. Do you have our studio open? Yeah. Yeah, just go to packages on the right. Do you have the right window? Right. And then click on the, um, Got it. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I mean, our studio is really nice because just using R by itself was a little tricky. <laughs> okay, so. Well, I'm going to, um, Keep that file open just as a reference. And I'm just going to go over it briefly, okay, just as a, as a kind of a summary of what we're going to do, okay? So, okay, so once again, a tree map is a kind of pie chart in which rather than having slices, so rather than being based on angular, um, uh, it's still an area chart, so you're comparing areas, but uh, an, another key thing in a, in, a map, in a pie is the angle, right, that of, the, of each particular slice. Uh, the trouble with, with pies is that once you, get, once you have too many slices and once some of the slices get too small, they're really hard to compare. So a tree map has this advantage that you can have fairly small um, pieces within it. Oops, sorry, to get better at the zooming in here. Um, and, uh, and it allows you to put little bits and still kind of be quite uh, visual. Also, the nice thing is that you can have nested, if you like, pies. So in a, in a regular pie, it would be really hard to then to subdivide a big slice into much smaller slice. I mean, it's possible, but it's not as visually uh, clear. So in a, in a tree map, what you have is like nested sets. So in this case, you have cars on the right side here. They're separated by this big white line, which I did in Illustrator later on, or rather, you know, the authors here probably did the same. And on the left, you have trucks, okay? And, uh, and there's all kinds of ways that you can uh, slice it and dice it. There's different algorithms that might do all horizontal slices, might try to do all squares, which would be actually quite hard. Um, or in general, more, more generally, it's like a rectangle. So you're dividing it up into simple rectangles. Uh, they try to be fairly um, uh, random and, and nicely arranged and not like all going in the same direction. Uh, we're going to do also the key and the legend uh, for this color shift. So if we look at the set, the way the data is organized is actually quite straightforward. Uh, so you have an ID which may or may not be useful. You have a model name for each box. Uh, a percentage change in this case, again, is the change from one year to the next minus or plus, uh, and how many are sold. And then the category, you see, most of these are trucks and some of them are cars. So this will be one big box and then the trucks will be the other smaller box. Uh, so if you had even yet another, um, if you wanted to do more nests, you would do it by this, by specifying categories on, the, on this, um, on another possibly column. And then we talked about the unit sold is a monodimensional piece of data. It's just a number, right? So the program has to turn it into an area. So in order to have an area, you have to have a base by the height, right? One dimension by the other dimension. So the program just factorizes these numbers in such a way that when you're done, you get nice rectangles and hopefully no blank spaces. If you notice, there are actually a few blank spaces here, which may or may not be actual Nothing, I don't know, since they didn't put a label, I have a feeling that the program here just created some empty uh, boxes, to, which would be weird, right? Because then the total would be wrong. So I have a feeling they just couldn't fit the labels for these particular models. Um, and this is actually kind of a default version that we'll produce in our 
uh, with the colors. And you can see that the color shift is not very, it's not what we want, right? Because it, it, here it's starting at zero. And because the average for the year, that year was minus 2.5, the author of the graph, which happens to be Amanda Cox, one of their best designers, decided that that would be the shift to show who was doing better than the average for that year, uh, not just whether it was more or less from the year before, because everybody was doing worse, right? So the whole graph would have been red. Um, uh, here I'm just showing which, uh, which of these two, uh, I, I made a scrap file to create a key that would be proportional, but because because here I can just make, remember how we made fake circles for the key for the bubbles? We just added a few columns, right? Well, if we did that here, it would screw up the total, right? Because all of a sudden your total box would be bigger than reality, right? Because you're inserting new, you know, new numbers. So what I had to do is I, I made a script file and I tried to duplicate these two squares, which are close to 100,000 and to 50,000, I believe. Um, and here we go, I go through how I did that. In other words, I had to uh, basically rig those two boxes to give me round numbers, right? And, uh, but then I had to change some other numbers to make the total state the same as it was before. So sounds a little complicated, but essentially I wanted some like, you know, as if some car had sold exactly you know, 100,000 cars for that year, right? Which is impossible. And another model that sold like exactly 50,000. But if that were the case, then the other, the other cars, you know, the value has to change to give me the exact, uh, the exact original total number. Um, anyway, this shows again, what this is from the New York Times and the, uh, which I should mention for the purpose of the video that this graph was from 2007 right before the car industry pretty much imploded and the government bailed it out and everybody was doing not so great but especially truck sales were way down um, so we're gonna replicate this uh, this key and and um, color ramp or, or color legend um, here I'm just highlighting again what I did for those particular boxes, which I then was going to use as my key. Uh, and then you have the code that does a simple tree map without uh, the fancy key and the fancy color. Um, and again, here are the steps. So basically these are my two. This one didn't come out very good, right? That doesn't fit so well, but if I have 100,000, uh, it's easy to do 25,000 because that's just a quarter of that bigger box, right? So don't make a key where this will say, you know, 125,352 cars. That's not the idea, right? You have to make a round number. Otherwise, it, you're going to start thinking, oh, uh, gee, which one is close to that key, right? Um, and then this was the uh, uh, the simple you know, kind of out of the box color ramp, as Art calls it, or as ArcGIS called it. And, um, uh, but then we're gonna change that. So the code to figure out, like how to customize those color breaks uh, was actually done by two Gabriels, one Gabriel and one Gabriela. Gabriela is from Brazil and Gabriel is from the United States. They were my TAs a couple of years ago. Um, and, yeah, and this is pretty much out of the box. Now notice that the separations between the two, the two sets, it's not so great, right? I mean, here's the break. The only hint that this is the break for these two rectangles is that fact that this label right here for the category is like in the middle of those rectangles. But otherwise, yeah, this is hard to read, right? So that's where we fix it in Illustrator. Um, Uh, we're going to look at uh, nice resources like the Color Brewer palette. Um, and this was the final version in Illustrator, uh, pretty much, you know, identical to the one in the New York Times, I think. The boxes are going to look different because 
again, who knows what algorithm and what program they used. Um, and then at the end, you have both the simple code with the comments, and you have the uh, com you know the more elaborate code with the custom uh, with the custom colors. So let's see. Um, I think all you need is really the uh, uh, the code should be this one. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to save it and also I'm going to show you how I got these numbers. Um, let's see, save as uh, desktop. Any questions, guys? I, it, sorry, it takes a long time to go through this stuff, but. Um, And notice that even though the extension is txt text, you know, when you bring it into R, it doesn't really matter, right? Because everything is a text file. It doesn't, doesn't really matter what the extension is. Um, let me see if I can show you here. Under Tools, Web Developer, Page Source, um, I'm going to do a find. And I'm going to look for, no, not there. OK, so I must have gotten it. I must have found it. Um, in some other link. I think I followed some of these links to maybe where the data set was. Oops. So I think what I'm going to do is also just copy the entire code. Um, that is um, good stuff so that we have it. Again, don't, don't cut and paste the whole thing. Well, the PDF is still kind of the best Place. So I'm going to try to cut and paste from the PDF and see if that works. Um, when you download it, the data, um, it, it will show up something like this, and you can just do save page as. Does that work? Yeah, you can also, you know, when you are in R, you can say, you know, import data set from URL. That's another. Okay. Let's get started. <laughs> Very long introduction. Um, let's see. I'll do it again. So again, import data set, text file. <clears throat> Car sales, open. Uh, I'll start with the basic code, okay? So I'm just going to cut. You can also cut and paste. I'm, I think it's pretty safe if you cut and paste from uh, the browser window. Uh, so this is the, it's called TreeMap Test R, and it's the so-called so basic code. New R script. Yeah, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but that's okay. What it, what it's really just doing is before it creates the map, it also um, tells to uh, to put the labels on each box and to concatenate the name of the label, the model, and the number of units sold. Okay. So this is this new variable called field, and um, it's taking it's going to take the model column information and the unit sold information, and it's going to plot it, and it's going to call it, and it's going to paste, which means just like writing together two pieces of information from diff from two different places. Uh, so it's going to create it's going to take the car sales. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to take these two, and in between them, it's going to put a separator, which is, in this case, just a dash and a space. So this separator here is just saying, OK, between these two pieces of information, put a space, a dash, and another space. 
Uh, so I'm going to just try to run that. And I apologize, this is running into something that should be after, but now we'll try to run that. See if it works. Okay, that's just creating the variable. Um, so I should probably look at the annotated, but let's just see if it works first. Uh, so the Oh, I have to turn on my tree map package if you haven't done it yet. Um, do I have it? Oh, right. So thank you. Uh, which I, I have neither one, one of those, so I have to install them. Yeah, so that downloads together with tree map, right? Yeah, so install tree map. And when you do that, I guess the install dependencies is the, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but once you bring it in, oh, it's still installing. Uh, is it doing it? I guess it's doing it. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, wonderful. So, yeah, make sure you turn on tree map. And then the other one is called R Color Brewer. Okay, which is a kind of another custom little thing that creates the colors or Rather, it has a preset uh, color ramps, color scales. So make sure those are turned on. And now we'll try to um, run this. Yeah, wow, great. It works. So let's quickly see. So again, in R, it's not you know it's not pretty, right? I mean, this is this separation between the two categories of trucks and cars is not very obvious. And also, right now. It's also, it actually looks like, well, mostly it's, you know, going in the red, right? Only a few models are going in the green. And if you look at the uh, key, or the legend rather, you can see that the split point is at zero. Now, here's the thing that I can't get over, and I think it's wrong. Um, it's silly to define, you know, a color... In other words, this point should be at the breaking point between each color. Because if we say that something sold between, you know, 0 and 20, well, that's what defines the color. So the color should be, you know, in between the two numbers. So we can fix that it is in Illustrator, but I personally think that this is not right, the way the labels get put in. Um, also, what's really weird here is that all of a sudden 0 well, what's zero? There can be no cars at zero. It's either more or less, right? So by coloring something with this color, it's like saying I'm coloring nothing, right? So the zero should be at the least in one of these breakpoints. Uh, the zero label, that is. Um, so uh, let's just quickly look at the PDF again to see what the, uh, what the annotations are. Yeah, this is without creating the, the very fancy, uh, not the fancy, but like custom colors. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste this into, um, let's paste it in R, because I'm just trying to differentiate between, yeah. Yeah, this just breaks down what I believe this is the same code we just ran, okay? Uh, so the, the uh, what is this called? The uh, uh, blah, 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 at parameters, attributes? Each one of these is uh, it's an attribute. But anyway, let's, let's break it down. So tm plot is the command, and you're uh, doing car sales, which 
How did it? Yeah, carcells is the name of the files, right? So it drops the extension. So the first two lines create the new variable that combines the model name and the unit salt for each model in one single column. Uh, in, this, in this line here where you want to say what you want to put between the two pieces of, of information, you could put anything and you can even put basic HTML code or code that will create like for example a break. So in this case we're just going to put a dash. Um, so if you look at the, at the graph here, this is what that variable is doing, right? It's taking this information from one column, this information from another column, and in between them, it's putting in this little piece of information, which is the dash. We could say, you know, we could have said, hello world, smile, and it would have written that, right? Because it's a string, because it's between the quotation marks, you can, you can use any character, I believe. Um, so... Yeah, for example, if you use this thing instead, it would put a break, uh, which would be nice. And in fact, I think that's preferable. Uh, this is basically the code for a hard break between the first field and the second field. Um, OK, uh, so the tr builds boxes, index equals C, builds boxes are the values in category. Yeah, anything belonging to cars will go into one set. Anything belonging to trucks will go to another set. Um, the unit sold is that number, which is going to be, you could call it squared or factorized, right? Uh, and so the size of each rectangle is proportional to the number according to a particular, you know, algorithm. Uh, the change is the color and will set the color shift red to green based on the percentage. So obviously less than zero is red and and, and more is green. Um, let's see. In this case, that percentage change, by the way, was something we had to do, right? Because if you go to this website that might have, you know, how many cars are sold, you might need to do a little bit of Excel work in which you say, this is the number from last year, this is the number from this year, what the percentage change, and there's probably a formula that you can figure out to get that number. So there's a little bit of homework involved in that. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, this, the, the value is the numerical value in the change, the percentage change, the range is how far you want that basically to go. And this gives you the scale. Um, now the palette, in our case, is just a straightforward it's called red, yellow, green palette, and there is eight steps in between each, uh, each I mean, there's eight steps in the total, um, and it's diverging scale from color bluer. We're gonna look at that in a, in a moment. The algorithm is pivot size. I don't know what that means exactly, but um, there are other algorithms like, uh, I don't know, horizontal slices, squarified, whatnot. And it's sorting by ID, which is the size, and it, places the biggest rectangle probably in a corner. Uh, so let's just quickly go to the PDF and look at Color Brewer real quick. Um, uh, so Color Brewer is something that some students actually in some university, I think Pennsylvania, uh, devised. And it's pretty nice because you even have like um, so it was created for maps, and you can pick these sets, and you can even do like colorblind type of sets, you know, for people here, colorblind, safe, printer friendly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so people have used these guys, and uh, Mike Bostock did a nice thing where he also posted um, uh, hexadecimal notation. Let's see, what is it? And also JavaScript. Let me find it here. Maybe I should just do a find. I always forget one can do that. There. Um,
Yeah. So these are the scales, and some of these are just one way, and some of them are diverging. So the one that we used in the code is one of these. I think it's uh, this one, I believe. Okay. But again, notice, first of all, there's usually like too many steps. And notice how, because it's an, um, well, this, this could be this. I mean, it doesn't have to be not 13. I think there's like 13 or 11 here. But notice how there's one in the middle. And again, you know, if that's zero, that just doesn't make sense to me. So I would say in general, like get rid of white because, you know, white is nothing. Um, and definitely don't use <laughs> these guys, right? It's like there's no point because you're not going to be able to sort anything based on those. Um, just use either one one scale going one way or a diverging scale uh, going two ways and usually you know conventionals red means you're in the red black or green means you're in the in the black okay I'll quickly show how the how I did the key meaning the key is the one with the boxes right and the scale is the one with the colors uh, I'm just gonna go to the clean what I what I call the clean scrap version. Let's choose Excel. Yeah. So, do you have any questions about this? Do you understand what I'm doing? Is I'm trying to do the same thing we did with the bubbles in the other tutorial, in which you created the key to show a bubble that's maybe a thousand, a bubble that's three thousand. And to do that, we just created new columns, right? But because the bubbles were kind of just all over the place, it didn't really matter match much. But here, if I create additional rows, in other words, additional car models, even though they have fake names, that's going to affect the total because all of a sudden my, my total uh, rectangle is going to be uh, different and all the proportions are going to be different. So a little bit of homework. Uh, to do that and you know maybe there's a better way but again this is this is what I was able to do um, okay so this is my Excel I, I call it a scratch pad you know, I think this one And you, you really should have a key, right? I mean, because otherwise it's hard to, to just look at it. Okay, yeah, this actually explains pretty well. So this, is the, this was the original data. I'm going to try to do this quick, okay. This is the original data with all the models and this was my total, right? Uh, about two million cars for that, for, for Chrysler, okay? Now, what I did is like, oh, okay, I need some boxes that are about, uh, you know, about the size that I want to show, about 100,000 and about, I really wanted 25, but this is close to 50,000, so I'm, I'm going to pick these two. So I'm going to modify these four rows. I need to modify these two to create 100,000, 50,000, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up the difference, either plus or minus, by changing those numbers into these two other models. Okay? So that my total equals the one as before. Right? So do you see what's, what, hap what happened here now? Uh, oh, actually, the other way around, rather. This was the... I made this box. I made Dodge Magnum 25,000, and I made Dodge Charger a hundred thousand but I did a calculation below you see how these numbers now are different I had to increase Jeep Liberty and I had to increase Dodge Durango in order to get the exact same total and you know to do that I just did a few calculations here uh, so that's that's really important because otherwise again your total box is going to be um, screwed up and your key is not going to match your other graph So if you look at the new data set, again, this is just to generate the key, you'll see that these numbers are different from the original. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the new code to create that key. Let's see if it works. I'm just gonna copy. It's all, again, it's in the PDF, the link, and Oh, I need to call a new a new data set, the one that was called Clark. Um, you can tell because of these round numbers, right? So let me download that. And now in R, we're going to import that. And all this trouble to do one thing, right? One little key, but it's, um, you know, what you gotta do. Right here, open. <clears throat> Work. So, let's try it again. So now we have this sort of, again, dummy, dummy set just to create the key. And we're going to run that. run this and it looks like it did it and so these are my two boxes now where are they uh, they actually looks like they're different from the original yeah oh see this is every time is different it probably depends on the on the size of the box but um, so now these are my two pieces for the uh, uh, 100,000 and this is my box for 25,000 the proportions are different, but we don't care because we're going to make a box inside that 100,000 to make it look like 25,000. Um, so but that's great. So this works. So you keep this, and what probably does not change, and I say probably because, you know, you never know, um, meaning that you should keep your environment like exactly the same, so don't change the windows like I'm doing, so that this rectangle, the shape of this rectangle stays the same. I know this is one spot that R is, I don't know, maybe there is a way to know, to kind of lock it, but I don't know it. Um, let's do one with the, with the custom colors for the key, okay? Um, and that's just a, a bit of complex code, but um, and we're going to zoom in, take a quick look, and see what, how it's doing, what it's doing. Um, okay, the usual things we did before. Uh, now the separator is going to be slightly different. We're going to put a return instead of a dash, so it's going to make it into two lines. And here's how... Um, you know, again, I don't know exactly. This was my TA was a uh, one you are very well, but what this creates here is it's telling exactly um, where you want the breaks of the each little segment. Okay, so the first the first segment is going to be at minus a hundred percent. The second one is going to be at minus ten percent. The the middle break or the one where it's going to um, uh, let's see, there's still a break in the middle that's zero, and that's going to be interesting to see how it's going to turn out. But notice how there's this minus 2.6, which is, again, the industry average for that year, because everybody was going down. And then up, up from that is 10, 100, 200. Okay, so that's going to set uh, when the color is going to change. And then... Um, Where before we had this thing, okay, where before the colors were, were defined with the, uh, with the kind of ready-made scale, here it's calling up this variable called bucket, right? And then the type is categorical because it's based on that new bucket. Normally, this would have been the value, right? Uh, the range is from minus 20 to 200, which... Seems a little strange since we have minus 100 here, but maybe it doesn't matter. And then the palette, and here's where you can make your custom colors, right? So these are hexadecimal values for, you know, greens and reds. And you can type them in within quotation marks. 
and so it's going to assign each one of these to each one of these break um, and actually what I did was I took actually I took the ready-made scale but I got rid of whatever five values and only kept six and I looked up what they were in hexadecimal uh, and then the algorithm is the same um, Let's see, if you run it and the legend only displays five swatches instead of six, it's because there's no data between 100 and 200. Uh, note that the text of the labels does not match the colors because the, oh, because it's ordering them alphabetically, but color order is correct. Okay, a few little tricks here. Fix it in Illustrator, make the legend horizontal, connected square, rectangles, not squares. Um, yeah, just clean it up in general and you can double check in Photoshop the values but it should work so let's try to run that um, hopefully it should run because the the data set is already there but let's try it um, so this one creates the two fields together, right? The lab for the label, so we're just gonna run that. Okay, no errors, that's good. Uh, oh, actually, I forgot about this. I, you know, we didn't know how to do this, like, scale, how to replicate the scale in the assignment, so I, I, I asked, I, I was, I was telling the TA, oh, why don't you just, like, email Amanda Cox, you know, maybe she will be nice and she'll actually, like, let us know how she did it. And I sent to my TA without realizing I actually like was copying her because I was looking up her email. So I ended up asking her directly and she like responded within like, I don't know, six hours. She just like sent the answer, said, oh, try this method. And that was really, really nice. Um, so there you go. You know, sometimes all you have to do is just ask the author. Um, yeah, that guy that did D3, by the way, if you ever start doing D3, he's amazing. He answers, like, every question. <laughs> he's, like, this kind of superstar. But um, So anyway, we got no errors, so that's good. So now we're going to create this other thing, which is the separations. Hopefully no errors. That's good. Uh, again, it's all in memory, right? Nothing is happening. And now, if you're lucky, we're going to run the entire... Um, again, this is the break, the breaks, and this is the um, the whole plot. And we're gonna run that. Yay! That's it. Uh, not quite a wrap yet, but almost. That's great. So you see, this is really nice. And you know, you could you could modify the colors in Illustrator. The only trouble is that sometimes you might not be able to keep track of all your hexadecimal values. So here, these all look to be the same value, so you could kind of do a batch change, but may not be so easy in other, some other times. Um, anyway, this is it, and again, this, uh, the labels here, the, the, the scale is correct, but the... Um, well, actually, this looks to be correct, too. So I'm not sure. Maybe maybe it happened only in a few cases that the uh, the text was being sorted. So we're going to fix this in Illustrator. We're going to make this line really clean, and we're going to do a lot of other things to make this uh, beautiful. But now this is good, and we also have a key where our box for 100,000 is going to be very, very close. So let me just go back to the PDF. We'll look at the final version in Illustrator, and we'll call this uh, done. So, yeah, so, I mean, again, I just replicated it. I put white lines between the different boxes, which I think is much nicer. I put a big, thick line, which, you know, sometimes will affect your boxes, but it's so minor that I don't think, it, you know, it's that important. Um, notice how the label for truck and cars, instead of being in the middle of the boxes, actually appear at the junction, right? saying, okay, here's the separating point. These are cars, these are tracks, trucks. Um, yeah, I clean up my legend by putting, in this case, I put, I don't know, 
black lines because I think they give me a chance to put an extra, a longer line here at this point that shows, you know, below industry average and above industry average for that year. If I had done white, I would have been stuck here, right? Because I can't extend white onto the white of the paper. Uh, this is my key. So again, make sure you don't do a key that says, you know, 105,325. That's not, no point in that. And just do a nice, you know, maybe Helvetica regular for your labels. And uh, don't forget to put the uh, comma separator for thousands back in because remember our data don't don't have that because otherwise you can do it right because uh, comma is code and uh, sometimes you might need to change your labels to reverse to make it clear and that's it so thanks to Amanda Cox for for help in this.